Hello, and welcome to today's training industry webinar, Transforming Employee Performance Through Workflow Learning, sponsored by Conduit. I'm Jess Clayton, Marketing Specialist at Training Industry, and I'm happy you could join us today. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly go over a few housekeeping items to help you interact with our speakers and get the most out of today's program. Throughout today's event, please feel free to chat comments in the chat window and submit your questions in the Q&A window. We will address all comments and questions throughout the event or at the end of the program during our Q&A session. We also encourage you to share the information you receive today with your colleagues and networks via social media. Please follow today's sponsor at Conduit and hashtag TI webinars so we're able to track your contribution to the conversation. When the program ends, you'll receive a short evaluation survey and we would greatly welcome your feedback about the webinar. As always, today's webinar will be recorded and archived on trainingindustry.com and you will be receiving a follow-up email from us that will include a link to the on-demand program for you to share with your team. This is your first webinar with us. A special welcome goes out to you. At Training Industry, we offer dozens of webinars each year on subjects ranging from content, content development and engagement to influence in social learning. We cover just about every topic relevant to leaders of training organizations around the globe. If you have attended one of our programs in the past, thank you so much for joining us again. To get started, let me introduce you today to, to, to today's speakers from Conduit, Kate Ahern and Erica Hofstetter. Kate Ahern is a learning strategist at Conduit Learning Solutions. She provides talent talent development solutions to Fortune 500 companies across varied sectors. Kate builds collaborative trusting relationships to effectively analyze and validate client needs and recommend appropriate custom solutions. She has defined projects and led teams through strategy, design, development, curation, and execution. Kate has conducted workflow analysis, interviewed stakeholders, analyzed data, researched best practices, and built business cases. She holds a five moments of need designer certificate from Apply Synergies and is passionate about the value that workflow learning brings to both performers and their organizations. Erica is a service delivery manager with Conduit Learning Solutions. With more than 20 years in learning and development, Erica has served numerous clients across a vast array of industries, including entertainment, transportation, medical, energy, and the federal government. She currently leads a global team of project managers, instructional designers, and media developers serving a large life sciences company. Erica has helped transform the way Conduit approaches adult learning with a workflow learning and five moments of need approach. She enjoys this mythology. She enjoys seeing this mythology gain momentum across practitioners and customers who are reaping the benefits of these solutions. Erica and Kate, glad to have you here today. The floor is yours. Thanks, Jess, and thank you for having us and allowing us to present on this topic. I wonder if before we get started, if everyone could indulge me for just a moment and ponder something. So imagine that to train you to play tennis, I hand you a copy of the complete encyclopedia of tennis for you to read along with a racket and a can of tennis balls. And then I tell you that you need to be able to play in a tournament in the next two weeks. How well do you think you would do? Probably not very well. And, and it's probably unlikely that you'd get the ball over the net several times in a row. And, and why do you think this is? It, it's likely because I only focused on knowledge acquisition. I completely missed the most important part of learning, which is focusing on performance. Or in other words, what you need to be able to do to perform your work. This sounds simple enough when we share this type of example, but how often do you see training requests that focus purely on knowledge acquisition? We see it all the time and we really feel strongly that we need to start changing this paradigm. So during today's webinar, 
Kate and I will share some examples on how we've done this with our clients and also share some best practices and steps that you can take to get there as well. So Kate, let me turn this over to you so that we can get started. Off mute, sorry. So thanks, Erica, I appreciate that. Um, so when we think about the world today, there is so much change going on. And the one constant though that has been true over the years is that organizations want employees to perform their job duties and they want them to do so efficiently. Um, so we really need to, as learning and development professionals, we need to focus on this in our workforce enablement efforts. And so how do we get started with this? Well, first of all, we need to start with a performance mindset. Okay, um, we need to start with a performance mindset. And we do this by really determining what the employee's performance objectives are upfront. And that way we can truly determine what will enable them and what will drive business results at the end of the day. But while we're doing this, we really can't forget about the employee and what they're going through. Today's employee is overwhelmed, they're distracted, they're impatient, and they really are interrupted continuously. On average, they're being interrupted every five minutes. So they really um, can't stop work all the time to accommodate training. That's a luxury that they just don't have today. So they're looking for targeted and continuous learning that really enables them and empowers them to take more control over their own development. So flexibility in where and how they learn, that's becoming increasingly important. So to enable our workforce to perform their jobs, we need things like clear communications. We need fair policies, especially when it's not a learning need. But when it is a learning need, we need an overarching learning strategy. And that's why we're here today. We're here to cover workflow learning and how critical it is to business impact. We're also gonna move into how it can be used in your organizations and how you can actually get started with it. So hopefully you'll find this a very practical webinar. So first of all, why don't we start with a poll that's going to ask you what workflow learning means to you? So is it A, trial and error on the job? Is it B, on the job training? Is it C, training that affects, um, is organized by workflow processes? And, or is it D, you really don't know at this point, that's why you're here today. So it should have popped up on your screen. Take a moment to answer. All right, everybody, take a couple seconds and finish up this poll question. Three, two, one. Okay. So trial and error on the job was the lowest than, um, than I don't know, and on the job training and training organized by workflow processes. So in truth, the first three items, trial and error on the job and training organized by workflow processes, all of those can be part of workflow learning. But the first and second ones, they're not always the most efficient and effective way for our employees to get up to speed. For those of you who answered, I don't know, well, you're in the right place. And we're going to actually um, you know, talk clearly about workflow learning and what it is. We'll bring you a lot of clarity with that today. So first we're gonna start by really addressing a misnomer about knowledge and how it correlates with performance. So 
So knowledge does not guarantee that someone is going to meet their performance objectives. Um, yet traditionally, when it comes to learning, many organizations have primarily focused their efforts on what people need to know. And guess what? They rarely lack for content when it comes to this. So for example, a training requester, someone comes to you and they may ask to cover a new regulation or a new policy that is being put into place. And they want to get down to the littlest detail possible. They want everything from A to Z to be covered. But then after the training, they wonder, well, why are employees still violating this policy? They knew everything they needed to know about it. Why is this happening? Well, when we take a workflow learning approach to this with that performance mindset I spoke about, we're gonna dig past the knowing and we're gonna find out what the audience needs to do. In other words, what do they need to perform on the job? And then once we know that, we can prioritize those tasks that are most likely to be met with errors or are true pain points for the employees. And then we can really design a better, more effective and much more relevant learning program than before. So really shifting to that performance mindset, that's gonna create effective workflow learning. And in, as a result, it's going to increase efficiency and effectiveness of the workforce so that they can better compete in the workplace. It's gonna increase agility in that employees are gonna be able to improve their ability to adapt to change, and it's going to enable them to build new skills. And guess what? In addition to this, learning, workflow learning is gonna address the five moments of need. So, as you likely already know, the five moments of need is a framework that was created by Khan Godfordson. Khan is the CEO of Apply Synergies and he created this many years ago. This is not new. This framework actually accelerates the learner's journey to on the job competence and it addresses the full range of workers needs when they learn and they perform on the job. It emphasizes that performance support can be used at all five moments of need and that we should really start our design at that moment of apply, the moment at which employees actually do their job. They apply what they've learned to what they're doing on the job, right in the flow of work. So we at Conduent actually discovered through research last year that companies that create this unified mindset in supporting their employees, they're much more successful than those who don't. And Conduent believes so strongly in this approach that we entered into a business agreement with Apply Synergies last year to be their preferred affiliate. And Kate, if I could just interrupt and add really quickly, if anyone isn't familiar with this five moments of need framework, um, Conduit and Training Industry did produce a, a webinar previously that's titled Unified Workforce Enablement, Getting Into the Workflow. And that focuses a lot on five moments of need. So we recommend that webinar if anybody wants to learn more. Great suggestion, Erica. Thanks. So we're gonna take a few minutes now to talk about how we can move from traditional learning to workflow learning. So if you've been in L&D for a while, you have likely seen some form of this graphic. Uh, Kate, why don't you dig into it and explain how it applies to what we're talking about here today with workflow learning? Sure, happy to. So this graphic actually shows the traditional learning journey. The green area over on the left-hand side where it says train, um, that is actually a formal learning intervention that takes place of such as a live classroom event um, and maybe a job aid is offered to the people who attend that event, uh, but maybe nothing else. And so what you notice happening here is that people may do really well, they're learning in the classroom, they're getting the concepts, they're nailing down the application of the concepts into various tasks. But as soon as they leave 
that classroom, they start to forget. Okay, and this is called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. And unfortunately, what happens is within six days of them taking that learning program, they will have lost 75% of what they learned. If they have not been given an opportunity to actually use what they learned, or they don't receive any reinforcement whatsoever. So certainly this event-based learning is not the way to go. It's not gonna give you a good return on investment. So in order to counteract this and bring the employee up to full competency on the job, we can't leave things to, ch to chance. We really need to um, you know, fill these the missing parts of what's going on here. We need to fill these question marks um, with intention. There is a void here get into that high competency on the job and to be able to just continuously improve on that base, we need to intentionally fill the void um, that is represented here. So Kate, share with us how to do that. Sure thing. So first, what we need to do is we need to take that train phase and we need to shorten it up, right? So maybe they spent five days in class before they're being inundated with information. They're probably covering a lot of things that they really don't need to know. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually shorten that up with targeted formal learning because we don't need to cover everything. And targeted learning, what, what that focuses on is tasks for which the business could experience serious risk if employees can't do those tasks successfully. So employees need the opportunity to apply and practice these tasks in the classroom or in the, whatever modality you choose for this formal learning. They need to, to do it in a safe environment. So having classroom training where there is a subject matter expert in the room that can help coach people along would work in this particular instance. But again, focusing on the tasks that are going to have serious risk if people go right into um, the work environment and just use performance support. So that takes care of the training, but there still is that gap in the blue area. So we'll need to have intentional performance support here. That's informal learning in the form of performance support that employees can actually easily access and use when they're on the job. This is gonna facilitate the transfer of learning and also it sustains that transfer. So for example, it's going to help make sure that the employee has support for when they actually encounter difficulties on the job, difficulties in the situation, or they need to do some problem solving. So for best results, the employees should be given the opportunity to practice with that performance support when they're actually in the targeted training. And then they've gotten used to it. So when they're out in the workplace, when they're out in their cubicle or on that manufacturing floor, they'll be better able to access that, that performance support quickly and be able to use it in the moment of apply that we spoke about. So Erica, performance support, it takes a lot of different forms. So can you tell us a bit about the resources and a typical performance support tool? Sure, absolutely. Um, so we use the concept of a performance support pyramid to represent the deepening layers of detail and the levels of support as you move down through the pyramid. And what you see at the top is the context or the workflow, which is the work we're performing. And using this as the starting point makes everything else so much more meaningful to employees. So the rest of the performance support components can range from job aids for specific tasks to supporting knowledge documents to even who to contact when all else fails. The most important part is that the information is chunked and layered, so it's available, but not in the way. So in other words, I can quickly find what I need to get to when I need it, 
but I don't have to wade through all of the other pieces of information to find that one thing that I need to serve me in that moment when I'm working. Um, so let, let me just briefly summarize what we've talked about so far. So the workflow learning solution includes both targeted training and performance support, and it needs to consider all moments of learning need. Content design needs to start by understanding what people need to do so that we can provide that context through the workflow. So Kate, next, let's talk about how this pyramid comes to life through digital support solutions. Sure thing. And, um, you know, I'd like to start by saying that digital support solutions, they are flexible, they're scalable, and they really meet your organization where it is from a readiness standpoint. So they can take many different forms and the final solution is really gonna be highly dependent on the scope of your project. So we're gonna take a look at two examples here today. And one is low tech, it's a workflow learning ebook. And the other one actually utilizes a technology platform such as an electronic performance support system that's also known as an EPSS. So we're gonna take a look at that today. Either way, both of these solutions and solutions in between them will meet your employees needs of being self-directed. They're gonna be able to quickly and easily find what they need to assist them in doing the work. So in other words, they support a pull approach as opposed to a um, push approach. So when you think about a push, we're pushing a lot of information out to the employees and maybe in no context of the work, we just feel you need all this information and we're parking it out on SharePoint. And so we're talking here about vehicles that will allow the pull. So again, the employee being self-reliant and being able to go out there and get what they need at the moment they need it. And we know that that's what the modern learner is looking for. It's what they're used to doing when they're on the internet Googling a recipe. It's what they wanna do when they're out um, in the workplace doing their job. So let's take a look at this ebook. This ebook was actually created uh, to train and support employees in an inspection process. And the workflow map that you see here on the right hand side, this is that context that we're talking about. And this is absolutely key. It provides a visual to the employees. Um, it allows them to picture themselves in the work process. And a good workflow map is really gonna mirror that process that they follow on the job so that they can quickly see where they are. And at that point, they can click you know, to the point of the map where they wanna to proceed to information associated with that process. So in this case, we're clicking on assess. This brings us to the page that covers the assess process. And on this page, you'll see the workflow map up there in the upper left-hand corner. And it's there for a reason, so that if they really wanted another process and not assess, they can quickly click on that workflow map and get to another part of the workflow. So it's there as a gateway back to that main workflow map. And it also shows you where you are right now. So um, what, shows up on this page is details about the process. So it shows initially this flow chart that talks about the different tasks that exist in that process. And if we click on the first task called assess site processes, now we're gonna get into even more layers of detail. Remember, we talked about layers of detail. Erica mentioned that earlier when she showed you the pyramid. So now we're in a much deeper layer of detail here. On the right side, the employee is even gonna see two categories, the about category and the additional support category. These are all reference materials and they allow the employee to go even deeper in their learning if they have the time to do that and they wanna do some exploration. So notice it follows that pyramid structure. So let's see what happens when we click on customer service. What happens when we click on customer service here is we have a pop-up that contains rel relevant information to that particular employee's job. 
So as you can see, organizing the information in alignment with the contextual workflow really helps the employee get to the information that they need in two clicks and 10 seconds. So now we're going to take a look at an example that is powered by that higher technology, an EPSS or Electronic Performance Support System. So Erica, can you share this one with us? Sure. So what you see here is an EPSS that provides performance support for a systems processes. And as you saw with the workflow learning ebook that Kate just shared, a workflow map guides the way. Uh, it also helps us enable what we say is two clicks, 10 seconds access to get to the information we need. And using an EPSS tool like this enables more functionality over something like an ebook. So, for example, there's more intricate search capabilities as well as the opportunity to use a dashboard so users can customize the solution to their needs. In addition, we can also measure the consumption of content through an EPSS over time. So let's dig in a little bit here and, and take a closer look. So we can click any of the processes in this workflow map to get to the relevant performance support related to that part of the process. So let's click the number four process and we'll see that we would navigate to this part of the EPSS, which is also this part of the overall process. So here you can see this particular sub process ensure data integrity and its associated tasks. When we select one of these tasks, we'll go further down into that process into the EPSS and we'll start to see the actual steps that occur within this process. So what we see here is the steps of the task at a high level, what we call quick steps. If this is the level of support that I need so that I can get what I need and continue on with my work, I can stop here. I don't need to go any further. But if I do need more instructions or additional help, it's available. So if I click the down arrow next to one of these steps, more detailed instructions will display. So these are the detailed steps that provide that step-by-step -step instruction if I need it. We can include things like system screenshots or any other type of information that might be needed to support the detailed steps. And remember our performance supports pyramid that we shared earlier, well, deeper levels of additional supporting knowledge are also available and linked on the panel on the right side of the screen. And these resources are also available whenever I need them. So for example, if I click the first item in the references section, I'll open that resource. We could link to all kinds of things, articles, procedures, we can build custom content and put it here. Or for this example, we have a demonstration video that we've linked. Again, it provides that deeper level of detail or support that if I feel like I need it, or this is a really new task to me and I'm not quite sure how to perform these steps, I can get that deeper level of information. If I'm an experienced user and maybe this is a task I don't perform every day or that frequently, and I need reminders of where I need to go, I can just stop at that quick step level and say, oh, okay, that's right. I do this first, then that. Now I know what to do. I can get on and do my work. Another advantage to an EPSS is that in, as an employee uses content, they can also tag it as a favorite. And these favorites then show up under their My Favorites tab. And that makes this another quick access point to find exactly the information that's needed when it's needed. So now that we've shared a couple of quick examples, let's do a poll and see what ideas you may have thought of for the use of workflow learning at your organization. So uh, if you could take a minute and answer the question, where could your organization start implementing workflow learning? You can select multiple options for this. And we've just added a, a few ideas here, such as employee onboarding, system implementation, leadership development, cross-training, 
new business process training, or other ideas that you may have thought of. All right, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to wrap up your voting. Remember that you can choose multiple answers. In five, four, three, two, one. Okay, thanks, Jess. And, and it looks like you guys have some really good ideas on where to use workflow learning. Um, and I, I think it's important to see, and it looks like you're, you're catching on to this, that the opportunities really are limitless. So Kate's going to share a few more examples that show how workflow learning has been implemented across various industries and different types of training, including onboarding or um, sustained development. So Kate, let me, let me turn it over to you and share some additional examples. Okay. All right. So as uh, Erica mentioned, you know, workflow learning isn't limited to any particular types of employees or environments. It really is limitless, uh, the opportunities in which you can use this. Um, it's also not just about supporting system implementations or business process changes, which most people think about right off the bat. So let's take a look at some uh, sampling of use cases that we have from across different industries. And the first one is in the manufacturing area. Um, shift workers, they needed to be able to cross over from one production line to another in order to really reduce downtime uh, when there were enough people there or they needed more of one particular product. So the workflow learning solution included mobile performance support with visuals and tasks, which really helped them work the really complex equipment. You know, equipment that has a ton of different steps that you would never remember in your head. So having a tablet or a phone that had those steps was really helpful to them. And as a result, the product output met quality standards and there was reduced uh, downtime as a result. Another case was in healthcare. And what was happening here was that nurses were losing knowledge in between intermittent compliance testing that they needed to complete. So for example, there were changes in the medication dosing uh, that they really needed to keep up with. The solution was an EPSS that supported all their moments of need. And in addition, adaptive learning was provided, which actually pus pushed out questions and exercises for people to complete, to test their knowledge from time to time in between that compliance testing. So really the entire workflow learning solution set contributed to consistency and performance. Another case is in the public health industry. And um, a call center really needed to be set up very quickly. Luckily, there were very clear standard operating procedures or SOPs. Uh, however, the downside was that because this was being set up so quickly, the system being implemented simultaneously you know, there was a lot of uh, different releases. So there were a lot of updates that needed to be made to those standard operating procedures. Um, there also wasn't any time for formal training. People were being hired and they were being put right on the phones because of the nature of this call center. Um, so because of that lack of traditional formal training up front, really had to use that EPSS set that up very quickly based on their standard operating procedures in order to support the call center. And the result in this was an extremely rapid time to proficiency for all of these new folks at the call center. In another example in the agriculture industry, uh, there was a rollout of a go-to-market strategy and it was getting rolled out to marketing professionals and sales professionals. And the solution combined foundational classroom training 
And that was focused on critical tasks. Uh, another part of the solution was an EPSS, and this covered everything they needed to be able to do to do all of their tasks. So what ended up happening was this EPSS became the single source of truth, where there's a lot of disparate pieces of information all over the place, which you will likely find in a very mature company, right? There's a SharePoint page here, there's a knowledge base there. Um, what happened was this EPSS really became that sole source of truth for people so that they were able to establish a common language across all these professionals and sustainable learning um, existed because updates could be made very quickly into this EPSS. The next case is in a management consulting firm and uh, they needed to onboard for a center of excellence. This onboarding, uh, because it was done through workflow learning solution, uh, resulted in a 25% capacity gain and a 30% reduction in formal learning, formal classroom learning. So what they did was they had targeted training, right, on those more critical tasks, and they gave people the opportunity to practice there. And then they also had the EPSS to support them with the context and the flow of work. So, um, so really amazing results here. What was really critical with this particular case was that change management was pervasive throughout all of it. It was really critical for them to change the performance mindset of the people going through the learning as well. So not only the people designing the training, but the, the people who are going through it as well. Um, finally, in a financial services company, uh, there were roles that were responsible for a particular type of account. So this role was responsible for one type of account. Well, all of a sudden, they need to be responsible there for two other types of accounts. So great expansion in their responsibilities. And so they needed to be cross-trained into those different types of accounts. So information here was in all disparate places as well. It was all over the place because it had been supporting other roles in the past. So other people own that information. So um, a workflow learning ebook, similar to what we showed you before, this consolidated the different account information within the context of the work using that workflow map. And in addition to that ebook, there were regular check-ins with that expert. So we didn't completely lose the access to an expert here. Um, having people resources to complement things like eBooks or even EPSSs is really helpful for work learning, uh, workflow learning project. So you've now seen that workflow learning can really be used for a wide range of challenges and audiences to support all different types of initiatives. Uh, from cross-training to upskilling. Solutions can be as simple, uh, can be simple and they can be much more complex. And it really depends on the nature of the project. So they can be as simple as a poster and a job aid uh, that's posted in a work environment that is more physical and the people who are in that environment don't have access to technology, smartphones, or even laptops. So it could be as simple as that, that shows a very clear visual workflow map and then shows the steps underneath it. Or it could be mobile support for those who work in environments where they have access to either a company smartphone or their own smartphone. And then it, there could be a full-blown EPSS that is accessible in all five moments of need. So really the solutions can be quite broad. It's really gonna depend on the scope of the project and the nature of the content that you are working with. So you're actually probably taking um, a lot of these approaches already that we've spoken about. So we're gonna ask you one more poll question to see what you're doing. And the question here is what aspects of workflow learning does your organization currently use? And the options are defining performance goals before defining the solution, electronic performance support tool, practice focused formal learning, avoiding knowledge dump, and we don't use any of these approaches. Be honest. 
<laughs> so multiple choice, you can choose as many as you want. Give you a couple more seconds to wrap up your answers. Ending in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so practice focus formal learning um, is in the lead followed by um, defining performance goals before defining learning solution. Awesome. Hey, sounds like people are, are already on the path. Very good to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, at the end of the day, folks, so much of this is really solid performance um, focused design. And so if you've been doing that all along, it makes it so much easier to build a workflow learning solution. Um, so a lot of this isn't isn't new to people. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, we either serve clients or we work for a company that's maybe st stuck in the old way of doing things. You know, maybe you've seen um, some death by PowerPoints in your day, right, where a lot of knowledge is being pushed out. So, um, so we're really hoping that we've given you some food for thought here. Um, so that you can actually recognize the opportunity to use even more of the aspects of workflow learning in your learning solution. So now we're going to take a moment, we're going to take a look at a recent solution that Conduin designed and developed for one of our large life sciences clients. And Eric is going to explain some of the challenges that really required a change to the client's traditional uh, L&D approach. Erica? Yeah, so um, our client had implemented a new system suite in an effort to transform their clinical regulatory and quality processes. The business goal was trying to drive speed and cost efficiency within their R&D group. But what was not initially transformed was their approach on how to train employees on this new system. And this challenge probably sounds quite familiar to a lot of you. Um, they originally implemented upfront system training that was required just to get access to this new system. The training was delivered too far in advance. And then when employees actually needed to do their work, they had forgotten what they learned in training. You know, that forgetting curve that Kate had talked about earlier today. The existing training also did not provide sufficient practice time for these new users and on the job support was limited to a cumbersome system user manual. And on top of all these challenges, the client also had plans to roll out multiple system modules simultaneously. So it didn't take them too long to recognize that they needed a better approach to training if they were going to meet those business goals. So yeah, Erica, that really does sound like a very familiar challenge that a lot of our clients have and we've heard over the years. Um, you know, we have to remember that everything about the way we do business has changed. But the way L&D has traditionally approached training has not. So we really need to, to help that along. So Erica, could you describe the actual solution that we implemented to solve for those challenges? Exactly. So first we started with the workflow. We mapped it out. We identified the processes, the tasks, the steps that employees perform when they're completing their work. And then we designed the entire solution around this workflow. So we developed a blended solution that's anchored by their electronic performance support system. This EPSS supports employees in their flow of work. They can access the EPSS very quickly to be able to find the performance support they need to help them complete their tasks. The EPSS is all organized around that workflow and that workflow map 
that makes finding things so much quicker and easier. And just to, by the way, we did build their EPSS in SharePoint so that we could use technology that was already part of the client's ecosystem. We also had targeted training that focused on critical tasks. But the main component of the solution is the performance support that users access while they're performing their work, right? While they're doing their, their work on the job, they can go into the EPSS, find that support they need, and then apply it to the work they're doing. And again, because that content is organized by the workflow, we're connecting the system tasks to the work being performed. That's awesome. So um, did the client actually see a change in performance? Yeah, absolutely. So not only did we lower the cost of training by eliminating the need for that upfront in-person training, but we also saw improvements in performance, um, including a reduction in the number of errors and also an increased speed to effective performance. Um, employee satisfaction with the new system also increased because they were now properly supported as they perform their work. And another savings for the customer and another added benefit is that the subject matter experts were now spending less time supporting those new users who were now properly supported with performance support. So the subject matter experts could then focus on more critical work that they could apply their higher level skills to. That's awesome. So it sounds like the client had a lot of great success with that particular project. And I'm actually hearing through the grapevine that a lot more projects um, have been started in a similar vein with this client. Right. So they've already engaged with us to do more. We have multiple workflow learning projects in progress. Some of them are similar to what we see here with new system implementations and others are related to just the day to day operations of the business. So great. So now that we've actually shared some examples with everyone today and given them a flavor of what can be done, um, I think we need to really talk about um, how people can get started with this approach. So Erica, do you want to talk a little bit about how people can actually pragmatically get started with this? Right, right. So, so how do you get started with workflow learning? So an early challenge for us, but one that had to happen is the mindset shift to change from fulfilling, fulfilling a training request to producing a performance focused solution. So the shift won't happen overnight, but it's instrumental to the success of changing your approach and doing something different. And once you've embraced that performance focus, you can start to cultivate it in others. And you can most effectively do this by explaining the benefits of a performance focus. And that's going to help stakeholders and subject matter experts align with the workflow learning approach. And what we've seen quite often is that the business functions get it. Once you explain why you wanna focus on performance and what the benefits of doing so are, they understand that concept enough to want to see it and, and want you to produce that solution. And to help match those performance objectives to business objectives, you also need to know what those business objectives are. L&D is oftentimes left out of these types of discussions. So you need to work with your stakeholders to clearly defined them, define them, and then address how the employee's performance objectives will align to help achieve those business objectives. Uh, Kate, is there anything else you might add to this list? Yeah, I really think at the end of the day, the most critical skill that you can be using during a workflow learning project is communications and asking a lot of consultative questions to really get to the true performance that is needed. So when you're actually trying to discuss and identify the performance objectives of, the, of your audience, your contact, your requester of training may very well dwell on what people need to know. Remember, that's how we started this whole session. That's where people tend to live because that's what they're used to what people need to know. So you're gonna to have to ask more questions. You're really gonna to have to dig. You're gonna to have to ask questions like, well, why do they need to know that? Or um, they need to know that in order to do what at the end of the day? 
Um, and slowly but surely, your stakeholders, your sponsors, your subject matter experts, they're going to get used to you asking those questions. <laughs> um, if you do anticipate pushback and people want to move, you know, move this validation process along and design process along, and they want to push it along, like Erica said, make sure that you share those benefits with them, that at the end of the day, you're going to be producing a solution that is going to be an effective one and an efficient one, but it's only going to be one if it's really focused on performance as, as opposed to knowledge. So education of your client is really critical. And then the last recommendation I would make is if you have never ever done this before, start with a small pilot, you know? And so I think, you know, Erica's had ex recent experience in this and she can delve a little bit more into what this is all about and what steps you need to take to do that small pilot. Yeah, and Kate, a pilot really is key when you're trying something new. Um, so here, here's just some high level steps on conducting that pilot. You want to keep the pilot small. Start with just one work function or one performance goal. You know, don't, don't try to take on everything at once because you're going to want to prove the solution and prove its benefits and its effectiveness. You also want to keep that pilot focused. So you need to clearly define the scope of the solution and, and then use this to help maintain stakeholder alignment throughout so that you can maintain that small pilot and, and maintain that focus. Um, you want to identify and document the workflow processes and tasks. So like we've said multiple times here, we, we map out that workflow. We actually create a visual workflow map that helps guide and model the solution and becomes part of that solution so that as employees are using the training and the performance support, they can visualize where they are in their own work workflow. Um, you want to identify those work processes and tasks, as well as any other required knowledge to support those tasks. So knowledge documents and assets don't go away they are just given the context of the performance and the work that people perform to make them so much more meaningful. You also want to build a prototype or a proof of concept of the performance support and any associated targeted training so that your stakeholders can visualize it. So very similar to what you would do with any type of large learning program, you want to have that prototype to get people's early reactions and to get buy-in from those key stakeholders before you proceed with that full solution build. And then finally, you want to conduct your pilot with your target audience. So the good thing though, once you've had success with the pilot, word is going to spread and you will likely be getting more requests for a workflow learning approach. That's what we have seen with our experience. And, and I think that once you start taking the steps and demonstrating um, you know, the, the benefits and the returns for focusing on performance, you'll start seeing that as well. So Kate, why don't we move on then to a summary of what we've discussed today? Sure. So, you know, we've learned a few things today. Uh, we've learned that a workflow learning solution is going to ensure that learning is centered on how best to support the learner's performance. It's going to provide practice through targeted training. It's also going to provide instruction, information, and performance support all at the time is that employees need to do the work. Um, performance solutions actually enable employees to apply their learning um, as they work. Employees, as a result, are going to feel confident. They're going to feel more self-reliant because they're going to be able to access the resources they need at the moment they need it. They don't have to wait for the next training class to take place. So this helps them get the job done efficiently and effectively and actually continue to improve and innovate. So really, as we discussed, um, this really takes a mindset shift. Um, it starts with us taking a mindset shift and also our um, internal requesters of training or the clients that we serve. And finally, it's going to work best if you start small and gain that momentum and that momentum will build be ready for it. <laughs> um, but it's all good at the end of the day because you're going to feel very aligned with the business and you're going to see amazing results. 
So really, we really hope that this discussion has helped you all um, understand workflow learning a little bit more. And we're going to open it up for questions. Looks like we have a few minutes for questions. We'll take as many as we can. And put those in chat, please. Uh, so Kate, there's there's already several questions in here. Um, I I can pool a few and, and get started with them. Um, awesome. here, here's here's one. I, I I'm happy to take this one. And it, it's a few things. A couple of questions I'll combine around EPSSs. How are they different from using something like Google? Or how do I link it to my LMS? Um, another thing we've we've heard a lot is can my LMS do what an EPSS does? And um, an EPSS is very different from an LMS, but the point of the EPSS is to make things very easy to find. Two clicks, 10 seconds. That's all the time we want people taking the time away from work to find what they need to then get back to work. Um, your LMS isn't set up to do that kind of functionality. So, you know, when's the last time you could find something and use it from an LMS in less than a minute? Um, however, we recognize that you likely have very useful and important assets that already reside in your LMS, and you can keep them there and link to them at the appropriate place in that EPSS. So we shared that right panel that gets to the deeper levels of support that represent the performance support pyramid you can link to learning assets or you know that, that's just one type of thing you can link to the same way that I could link to an external internet site or a policy document there. So if you have information that's stored in your LMS, you can integrate it with the EPSS and then pull those assets in those likely needed places within it to help support your learners in their journey. Um, so really great questions about using EPSS in, in different situations. Um, Kate, here's another one that I think would be good for you. Um, how are digital support solutions maintained and kept current? Um, what's really critical with um, things like an EPSS or an ebook or any type of digital support is having a very strong governance. Um, you need owners, right? Owners of this content, subject matter experts, um, and they need to be on top of things, right? So if, a, if there's a new release of a system, if there's a new business process that's being put in place, if there's a regulation or a policy that is causing changes and steps that people need to take, they need to be aware of that and they need to go in and make sure that these are updated. Um, the beautiful thing is when you have an EPSS set up, um, you know, there's all different types of EPSSs out there on the market, but um, most of them are very intuitive and easy to get updated. Um, so, you know, that's probably the easiest part of the process. It's just making sure that you're being true to your workflow visual and, and true to the initial design that you put together so that people are, are used to seeing things the same way. It's just now you've you've replaced something. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that people aren't automatically going to notice that change that you made, right, in your resources document. They're not, they're not necessarily going to recognize that a job aid's been changed. So part of that governance um, is also communication, communicating out any changes that take place so that people are aware that something's been updated. Hope that helps. So Jess, how are we doing on time? We have time for one last quick question. Okay, so Kate, uh, how about this question, really around starting the conversation about workflow learning within their organization? Yeah, so many people don't know how to get started because they're, they're dealing with um, many folks that are maybe stuck in the old way of doing things, right? So what's really critical is as much as possible, really educate yourself on workflow learning. Now this was, for, for some of you, maybe this was the first time that you heard about this. So hopefully this discussion helped, but there's a lot of resources out there that you can um, take a look at. Uh, particularly on our website, on the Conduit website, we have a few white papers on workflow learning that you can take a look at. 
and then our um, Apply Synergies, uh, who we're a preferred affiliate for and have a good relationship with, they also have a great online community that focuses specifically on this. And so educate yourself on really the benefits of this approach and also make sure that you're getting a really good understanding of the business, an understanding of their pain points and what their challenges are and their growth opportunities. Speaking the language of the business is really critical. And so if you know where their gaps are and opportunities are and problems to solve, then you'll be better able to identify a workflow learning solution and discuss the benefits. All right, everybody, I'd like to invite you all to join us for some upcoming training industry webinars this month, especially our leader talk happening tomorrow on sales training and enable it. You can register for these programs and watch past webinars now at trainingindustry.com. All training industry webinars are pre-qualified for a credit hour by ISPI, CPTM, HRCI, and SHRM. What is CPTM? It is the Certified Professional and Training Management Program that assists you in developing core competencies that will empower you to manage the future training needs of your organization. You can participate in a number of programs held within the U.S. or join us for a virtual practicum from anywhere in the world. For more information, visit trainingindustry.com slash training. And of course, we would love for you to join us at the next Training Industry Conference and Expo happening in September. One last reminder that an evaluation survey should have popped open in another tab in your browser and we would greatly welcome your feedback about the webinar. Thanks again to today's speakers, Kate and Erica, and our sponsor, Conduit. Thanks to all of you for your time and attention. For Training Industry, I'm Jessica Clayton, signing off.